Patrick takes the snap, drops back, lobs it back right corner. Decker! He's got it! Touchdown! Eric Decker scores! And the Jets have won it in overtime! This is the Jet Take with Ben Blessington and Kyle Fahey. Welcome back to another episode of the Jet Take. I'm your host, Ben Blessington. A lot of stuff to talk about. We're recording this on a Friday night. Um, So the New York Jets obviously beat the Cleveland Browns, but you guys already know this. We're here for one reason, and that's to dissect this weekend's game against the New England Patriots. We're going to be doing that uh, and a lot more. Um, So let's get right into it. Really quickly, before I bring on Kyle, uh, we got to do some plugs. Make sure you follow, follow us on Twitter at the Jet Take. That's our, our biggest social media platform, over 1,000 followers, so make sure you check us out. We post daily. That's the best way to keep up with us. Our other three social media uh, pages, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, again, all our content is on there. We're also a part of the Turn on the Jets digital network. Make sure you check out all those guys, Joe Caparoso, Dalvin Osario, Jeff Lloyd, um, Play Like a Jet podcast. There's a bunch of good Jets uh, people and, and podcasts and articles uh, on that site. So turn on the Jets.com. You can find all our uh, shows, and Kyle and I also uh, write for them uh, when we feel like it. Um, anyways, the last thing, the last plug. Hey, Kyle, you haven't been introduced yet. Go, go back behind the curtain. Um, wow. The last thing that we want to plug is, so we, we, had a, we were working with the New York Jets in the beginning of the season um, to bring you guys three games, three tickets to, to three games. Um, but we've refreshed it, and it's an even better promo offer. Um, so there are three games, discounted tickets on the NewYorkJets.com. Uh, so if you go to New York Jets or NYJets.com, uh, you go to buy tickets, you enter the discount code, the Jet Take, you'll get a discount on the tickets. So they're already cheaper. So the three games for right now are this Sunday's game against the New England Patriots. So two, three, and two divisional rivals. I hate the Patriots. Patriots fans hate us. Um, it's going to be a terrific game, great atmosphere. I'm excited about that. Then on October 29th, to see the defending NFC champions play the Jets, the Atlanta Falcons, you can buy tickets to that one. Or November 2nd, uh, hosting the Buffalo Bills on Thursday Night Football at the Color Rush game. Uh, there's a chance they'll be at that game as well. So those three games, you can get discounted tickets using our pro- promo code, the Jet Take, on their website. And the other good part about it is if you are one of the first five people to use it, you will get field access after the game. You can go on the, you can go on the field, uh, run around, take photos on the bench, um, you still get some VIP privileges as well. If you're, if you're one of the first five people to buy it, we've only sold one so far So because we just launched this today. Um, so make sure you check it out, um, and, and you'll have an opportunity. So just DM us, let us know, uh, and we'll, we'll try to make sure everybody knows when, when the cutoff at five has been. So you can get field access, discounted tickets, great games, official New York Jets uh, tickets. Make sure you check them out, NewYorkJets.com, enter the promo code, the Jet Take. All right, without further ado, Kyle... Mr. Money, Kyle Fahey, how's it going, man? Um, as of right now, as you were talking, Houston just scored a run, so I'm not good. I'm not happy right now, but I'm going to cake face my way to a smile, and I'm going to bring mm. my best to tonight's show. All right, yes, Kyle will be watching the, the Yankees-Astros playoff game, um, so we'll just, we'll just have to hear him screaming in the background. If, um, if will... there's a home run, I'm screaming. Just letting you guys know... Sorry in advance, but, you know, Mets fans, I mean, sucks to suck. I mean, go Yankees. You just, like, ostracized half our viewers there. But anyways, uh, let's, let's get, hop into it. Before we, get, before we get into the Jets-Patriots talk, let's talk a little bit about uh, this Cleveland Browns-Jets game. Uh, Kyle, what, what are your in, what's your instant uh, reaction to this game? Um, I thought it was, it was a gritty game for the Jets, and it was one that I kind of predicted – uh, when I said that I thought it was going to be very similar to last year's game where Cleveland's going to get off to a hot start, but the Jets are just going to win it slowly. It was going to be ugly, gritty. Um, but the Jets got it done. What, what are your thoughts? It, it wasn't a good game for the Jets. I mean, we got a win in the record books, but it, it's just not something to be encouraged by. This is the type of win I don't want this year. Whether you're happy about it on Twitter or not, the Jets played very badly. We almost lost to a rookie quarterback followed by Kevin Hogan, who I want to say was a fifth-round pick, if I remember correctly, and the Cleveland Browns, who literally had Miles Garrett on, like, one leg, and that was about it. It was a very bad game for the Jets. Offense performed poorly. There was only one play, and I'm not even going to give credit to the Jets for it. It's more against the Browns. The Jermaine Kirsch touchdown, 
we have four guys against three guys in coverage. I don't know about you, Ben, but as a defensive coordinator, that just doesn't add up. That's why Jermaine Kerr scored a touchdown. So besides that, really, the whole game was terrible. You know, if I'm going to take away an upside from this, Deron Lee, he played fairly well. Uh, I was kind of surprised by that. I don't know if it's going to stick. Probably not, knowing him. But uh, that's the spirit. Uh, um, well, yeah, we'll do our studs and duds in just a minute for this game. Um, but I want to just talk, yeah, a little bit more about, uh, let's, let's flesh this out a bit. Yeah, I mean, you said earlier um, when we were talking that, that you thought that the, the Browns just lost this game. The Jets didn't win it. Uh, take, us, take us through some of those scenarios. I know you mentioned the Jermaine Curse touchdown. Where, I mean, they had, if you watch, Brian Baldinger does some great, you know, uh, yeah, breakdowns of some plays. Yep. And, he was, and, he, and, yeah, he's shown some Jets plays throughout the year. But he, he was showing that, I mean, the Browns were dropping, like, Danny Shelton in coverage on that, and yep. the Browns came up to stop the wide receiver screen, and then Jermaine Kirst just had an easy 40-yard um, touchdown or whatever it was. Um, so just take us through, I mean, how do you think um, the Browns just lost this game? I, I, they missed a, a lot of field goals, and there were some turnovers, but uh, just, just to highlight uh, for our listeners uh, some of the things that they could have done better. Yeah, obviously turnovers, they kill you in any game. You know, we had one of our own, Josh McCown, through that one interception. Uh, it didn't really hurt us necessarily too much because obviously we did get the win. But uh, Deshaun Kaiser, you know, in the red zone, he made a rookie mistake. Uh, Marcus May did not make a rookie mistake. He made a very good play. Uh, just knew it immediately. Just absolutely no hesitation. It's like he saw it on tape. He probably did. Um, just immediately went after the ball. If you don't know what I'm referring to, that's bad podcasting. But uh, Marcus May immediately off the snap, you know, uh, Deshaun Kaiser was looking for a little spacing play, out route to, I, I want to say, a tight end. I think it was I David re- Njoku. I, I'm not sure. It was Njoku, okay. And Marcus May just immediately intercepted it off the jump. So it was a good play by him. I will blame that on Deshaun Kaiser. He shouldn't have thrown that. But the second turnover, that was just a pitch that Isaiah Crowell has got to catch no matter, like, it was kind of wobbly. I will say that. But still, you should catch that as an NFL running back. It hits you in the hands. He heard the footsteps, and he wasn't paying attention. So those two turnovers in the red zone, I may add, don't know if I said that, really hurt the Browns, helped the Jets. Then two missed field goals by Zane Gonzalez, the guy who I was really big on out of the draft this year. I don't know if you guys recall that, but I, I kind of wanted the Jets to give him a chance, either like really, really late seventh round or an undrafted free agent. You know, he was the most accurate kicker in college football history, and yet he missed two, you know, pretty... Same with Robert games. Aguayo. <laughs> Roberto Aguayo. Or, wow. Roberto. <laughs> I just Americanized uh, his name, my bad. Yeah, uh, Roberto Aguayo, my bad. Wow, Ben, I'm offended. Um, so yeah, those are just points right there that the Cleveland Browns, I don't want to say, you know, took away from themselves, but they didn't achieve. They didn't execute. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's what you got to do to win games. I guess the Jets just executed just a little less suckier than the Browns did. today. (laughs) Yeah, I guess that's one way to put it, but you know, a win is a win is a win. The Jets uh, have won three in a row. Um, yeah, I thought it was an ugly game. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you have to be encouraged by, as you mentioned, Darren Lee, Marcus May making a, a great play. You know, Jamal Adams had struggles at time, uh, times. Uh, same with Elijah McGuire. Did not have as hot as a game as he did against the Jaguars. Um, so, yeah, there, there are definitely things to, to look down upon and, and have to improve. But overall, I've really liked Coach Bowles and how he's handled the team this season. So let's get into it. Studs and duds um, uh, of this game. Um, we'll start with some studs. Uh, I'll go first. Obviously, uh, I guess we can open it up. I'll, I'll start with the offensive line. I thought they had a solid game, although Josh McCown took some sacks and, and the running game um, wasn't that good. So on the surface, you're like, why would you mention the offensive line? Uh, they were big when, it, when you needed it. Uh, I think you, you look at every touchdown Josh McCown had, perfect clean protection. And you also have to you know, take into effect that this offensive line was supposed to be terrible this season, uh, and overall this season they've looked pretty competent, which is all you really need um, in this Jet system. In John Morton's system, it's a lot of quick passes. Uh, it's a West Coast-style system. So I was, I've been pretty impressed with them this season, and in this game I, I liked uh, some of the stuff they did. Um, looking forward, they're going to have to a- increase their run-blocking protection. I mean, they had such a dominant game against the Jaguars, um, but then this game was not uh, was not the same. But uh, I just liked how, how they were when, when in third downs and late game situations. Uh, I thought they blocked pretty well. Yeah, I think Brandon Shell really, really performing well. I I don't want to jump the gun here. I don't want to jump the gun because there is a curse. We've acknowledged it. 
But Brandon Shell looks like a solid right tackle in the NFL, and this is still only like his eighth game. With, and he was going against, you know, not terrible competition in the Browns' defensive line. It's better than it has been in the past. You know, obviously with the addition of Miles Garrett, you know, Danny Shelton on that line, they have some talent, first-round picks on that line. And, you know, they were playing well. Brandon Shell did not give up one pressure, according to Pro Football Focus. Yeah. That's good. Um, yeah, Wesley I, Johnson, I was... Sorry, sorry, keep going. Yeah, Wesley Johnson played very poorly. Very, very poorly. Uh, he's been playing pretty bad all year. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if the Jets made a switch to Jonathan Harrison at some point, which, you know, I'm not a Jonathan Harrison guy. You guys have heard me talk crap about him in the past. But uh, it may be like a necessary move right now because this Wesley Johnson is not living up to his expectations. He's definitely not filling the shoes of Nick Nangmold, and he's definitely not playing like he was last year. And same goes for James Carpenter and Brian Winters. I don't know what the difference is, but they're they're not bad. You know, they're still above average, but James Carpenter isn't playing at that elite level right now, and I think Brian Winters is still going through, like, some injuries. He's still got some nagging injuries. I wouldn't be shocked if he has a shoulder injury. Honestly, it just seems like on film that he's just kind of leaning towards one side and is struggling to kind of get strength in that left shoulder. But, you know, I'm not a doctor. It's just kind of what I'm seeing. But um, Brandon Shell played well. Kelvin Beecham against, you know, Miles Garrett. I mean, say Beecham, I guess, friend of ours, friend of the podcast, you know, obviously a good left tackle in the NFL. Miles Garrett, I mean, he basically did nothing. Those two yeah, sacks. Yeah, my, yeah, according to Pro Football Focus, I mean, yeah, Miles Garrett did have, a, you know, two sacks, but one was a miscommunication uh, yep. and the other was, was a cleanup. But, yeah, according to Pro Football Focus, uh, he finished with a 49.3 overall grade, uh, Miles Garrett did. Meanwhile, Kelvin Beecham finished with a 75.5 overall grade um, and shut down Miles Garrett. We talked about Brian Winters at the highest at a 79.5, uh, and he, had, he allowed um, no pressures at all. And then Brandon Shell, as you mentioned, had the 78.6 um, and had a ranking 49th in pass blocking efficiency among 65 tackles prior to this week's matchup against the Browns. Um, so I, I'm, I'm reading, I probably should, should give context. Yeah, I'm reading straight from the pro football <laughs> thing right now. Uh, <laughs> um, but against clues, I'll, I'll give, I'll, I'll cite my sources. Uh, this is John Gatta. Who, who hey, we work handles, with them now. I mean, we just... We yeah, uh, who handles the New York Jets pro football focus. He said, and I quote, against Cleveland, he was perfect in pass protection across shells, 34 pass block and snaps. He did not allow a single pressure. So oh, individual offensive line play was good. Um, but, yeah, Wesley Johnson uh, and Carpenter had some miscommunications at time. Um, so, yeah, I, I think you could see them make a switch to Harrison. Um, but, yeah, anyways, so let's go. Let's hear a stud from you, Kyle. Ooh, I'm going to go Marcus Mack. Uh, I may be a bit of a homer here, but he played very well. He is showing really good things, you know, all rookie year, and especially in this game, got his first interception of his career. Just you, you don't expect that from a rookie. You really don't to immediately recognize the play just based off like the formation. He knew that off the top of his head, never looked back, went and got the ball. And that was a very hard tank, uh, angle to make because David Njoku uh, is a fast individual. I, I would probably say he's faster than Marcus May, uh, even if you like see how bigger Njoku is than Marcus May. He's quite the athlete. Um, but Najoku is just a faster, bigger individual. So that was a really good play by Marcus May. Um, and I think he's been doing a good job in coverage. There's really only been once this year, and it was actually in this game. I know that's kind of like redundant, but there was only one play, and it was a miscommunication where a tight end got wide open in the middle of the field, and Tom Brady would probably make that throw, but Deshaun Kaiser didn't. He didn't even see him. So I'll forgive it, seeing as nothing really came off of it, but he's got to improve that a little bit, but he would be my stud for this game. Marcus May making huge strides as a rookie. All these rookies are making huge strides. Yeah, I mean, Darren Lee's not a rookie, but if you want to throw him into to some young players, he's making he strides. like one. <laughs> well, yes, but let's give him you know, some credit where credit's due. Darren Lee had a nice game, uh, flew around, made a lot of plays and, and, and run blocking. Uh, I was very impressed with him. That's exactly what the Jets wanted when they drafted him, a young, athletic, fast linebacker. Um, and he flew around the field and made some plays. I, I think he, and sorry to give two, but I think Demario Davis really compliments Darren Lee. And, you know, they're not the best inside linebacker duo that you could have. They certainly That's make a, a lot really of mistakes. But a passive aggressive one. No, no, I'm saying they they complement each other well. 
Demario Davis is doing a lot of the dirty work, and you know I know he gets a lot of hate from his you know for his past Jet seasons, and and he's not amazing in pass coverage, but he's on track to have the most tackle of, uh, of his career by a lot. He's having a very nice season, and this game against Cleveland, I don't I don't know if it was a Demario Davis revenge game or something, uh, but he was on fire. Um, I'll, I'll go back to the to the Pro Football Focus. Um, he had an 82.1 overall grade. He led the Jets uh, in over in like overall grades. He had the highest. Um, he rushed the passer 14 times and not three QB hits. Um, and across his 26 snaps in coverage, he was targeted only once, allowing one catch for six yards. So, and, and three stops in the run game. So, Demar Davis had a very good game, and and so did Demar, uh, and so did Darren Lee. Excuse me. Uh, I think they I think they just complement each other well. Demar Davis is a lot of the dirty work, takes up blocks, and that allows Darren Lee to fly in and and make plays. Um, what one's strength is is the other's weakness, which is you know tough because a lot of times you'll see the weaknesses get magnified. But in a game like this one, I thought they both had um, very good games. Um, so, Kyle, you, you can give some as well. Um, you know, I'm not as high as on the linebackers. But like I said, I think if they're complementing each other, it's a passive-aggressive compliment. They kind of get the job done for this year, but I don't think either of them are really in our future plans. Um, I, I, would like to, I would honestly like to see Lee get traded. Um, maybe to the 49ers. I mean, they released a pretty good linebacker today in the Borough Bowman. I mean, he's a couple steps less than what he used to be. But, you know, him and Reggie Ragland, they might actually complement each other pretty well. Or not Reggie Ragland, I'm sorry, Reuben Foster. Um, they would complement each other pretty well. And, you know, draft capital is always a must. So, I don't know. Maybe we throw in, like, a fourth-round pick, Deron Lee, get a first-round pick back possibly. I don't know. I, 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 I know. That's I, not I, happening. Come on, yeah. Kyle. Hey. Anything is possible. like a get, second get in, in, there, in Darren in there, Lee. Plus, uh, you probably have to get um, both seconds in Darren Lee to maybe have a shot, but uh, I still don't think that happened. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I would just like to see him go. I'm not impressed with him. Uh, he had a nice game. You know, he kind of understood the holes in this game, but he's fast, he's athletic, and, you know, he gets a lot of bad rep for his size. I don't think any of that really matters. He just cannot understand an offense. He has no idea what's happening, and that's why he's so hesitant, and that's why you see his speed get taken away, and that's why you see him getting eaten up by guards, because he doesn't realize what's happening. He doesn't know who has the ball, and when he does figure out who has the ball, he doesn't know how to get to him, because he's taking wrong gaps. Now, that's something you should have when you're a first-round pick. You should have that mental ability, and right now, he is just showing that he doesn't have it. Do I think he has it on film? Like, can he identify it in the film room? Absolutely. Do I think he can do it with his helmet on and things are coming into his headset and he's got to call a play? I don't think he can right now. And I don't know about you, but I'm not willing to draft a quarterback next year and then expect him to roam the middle of the field and then ask why we aren't doing well. Yeah, no, I I agree. I, I think... Look, this Jets team has a lot of holes, but I, I'm just trying to find the positives in in out of some. What? No, no, yeah, for sure. I'm just trying to find the positives in 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 this game. It's a win. I know you can look at the negatives, and yeah, Staren Lee has some issues, but I still think I wouldn't trade him. Uh, I mean, unless obviously, if if you're getting a first round draft pick for a Darren Lee in a fourth, then I'd do it. But um, you know, for the most part, what you're going to get for Darren Lee isn't that much. Um, I wouldn't trade him as of right now. I, I think. You know, he's made a lot of mistakes, but I really believe in him as a 4-3 outside linebacker. Um, but at the very least, I think he has a lot of athletic ability and put in the right system, I think he can succeed. Um, last stud I wanted to mention uh, before we moved on to duds, and then we're going to preview this Jets-Patriots game, uh, was Morris Claiborne. I thought, I think he might be Mike McCagnan's best addition, um, free agent signing, that is. Um, I mean, look at, look at the other free agent signings. Think about it. Um, you're talking about Ryan Fitzpatrick. You're talking about Air. Oh, well, Eric Deck was John Itzik. Um, you're talking about who, who are you thinking? Ryan Fitzpatrick, James Carpenter, uh, Matt Forte. Um, try help me out here because they traded for Brandon Marshall. He was an assigned. Darrell Revis. Um, hey, I mean, think about it. I mean, yeah, and I guess, I guess after, I guess after at this point in Darrell Revis's 2015 season, we probably would be saying the same thing. So I guess it's a little early. But as of right now, Morris Claiborne has just been stellar. Um, he's not allowed. Um, you know, people are just aren't thrown to him, and then the Browns clearly made it their objective to target him, and and he was not giving them anything. Had an interception as well, and almost took it to the house. Um, so Morris Claiborne, very happy with his performance. Um, yeah, 
All right, I think that's pretty much all the studs. Um, Kyle, I know, I know you're, you're Mr. Negative. You're the pessimist uh, to my optimist. Do you have any duds you'd like to, to shout out really quickly um, before we move ahead? This isn't going to be a shout out. This is going to be a decimation. Um, I was going to say Marcus Williams, but I don't think there's any point. Uh, <laughs> he's gone, though, so I don't think we should criticize him. Um, I'll go ahead and call out Wesley Johnson. I know I already said his name once. I'm going to put a little more dirt on it. No respect on his name this week. I'm usually a big fan of his. This year, he's just not performing well. He's affecting the running game. There's a reason guys have not been able to break off runs like they were able to last year. You know, last year in that Bills game, you know, we saw Matt Forte do very well, find holes. You know, earlier Whoa. this what are you, uh, Kyle, the Jets have had plenty of big runs. Did you watch that Jacksonville game? Two big runs in five games. Yeah, but I, but to, I will, to compare it to last year, the Jets had like no big runs. Think of, think of the amount of big runs the Jets had in the 2016 season. Name a few. Blau Powell, San Fran. Blau Powell, San Fran. So which one? The 29-yard run for a touchdown? Yeah, that's a pretty big run. So that's, that's the highlight. The Jets had a 75-yard touchdown and like an 80-yard touchdown okay, last week. one of them was literally because Bilal Powell fell down and they were all stupid. They didn't touch him. Yeah, and then Elijah McGuire's that's... run. How about that? Wesley Johnson had a pretty good block on that one. Elijah McGuire made a very good play. They've also had some good I don't know, Kyle. I think, I think you're being a little too overly critical here. Um, He's playing. I, I, no, no I, agree, I agree with Wesley Johnson not playing as well, but... I think you're being a little too critical to say that, that the Jets are not having big runs. I mean, that's, that's one of the things they have had this season. Uh, I guess the Browns, they didn't have it, but I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know, Kyle. Um, well, let's, let's switch gears here. Uh, I don't think there's anybody. I mean, you could shout out. I mean, obviously, I'm Buster Screen's, like, number one enemy right now. I do not, I'm not a big Buster Screen fan. <laughs> and he, uh, played, he played very well. <laughs> I know. Game. That's that's the thing is I, I just I was I was so like that angry. That morning you like destroyed him and then like they he went, went yeah, he had, he had a pretty solid game. Um yeah. he it, it, you know on the run. Uh, he had a 92.0 run defensive grade. I mean, and again, you can put as much status as you want in his pro football focus grades. I mean, I remember Dewan Landry was one of PFF's favorite players. So, um but I mean, hey, it's just at least DeJuan it Landry takes a Jets great. Just like it just puts the NFL into discrete numbers, which is which is always fun to to, to compare. Um, all right, Kyle, let's let's talk a little bit about this Patriots game. First of all, um, are you cheering for the Jets win this weekend? Like, is the tank done? The, the tank's done for you, right? I mean, how many teams the first overall pick have had three wins? We're not going to get the first overall pick. That I know. So, so is it is it trade up season now? It might be trade off season. It might. But I don't want to give away draft capital, which is a big problem, and this is literally my worst nightmare, Ben. This is exactly what I did not want. KFC did the best video possible. I don't know if you saw it. I think you did because I think we talked about it. But it was about the Jets tank, and a lot of you are probably confused. KFC, he's from Barstool. We're not talking about the chicken place, just to clarify. But if you guys want to, <laughs> if you guys want to sponsor us. are looking good. What's up? Yeah, Ben's already got the slogan. Ben's already prepared. He's got notes ready to go. Uh, a $5 fill-up or whatever their deal is. But uh, anyway, KFC, Kevin Francis Clancy. Oh, and that's a hit by Judge. Score a run. Go. Oh, crap, they might throw him out. Okay. Oh, <laughs> they, they threw him out at the plate. Are you kidding me? Oh, God. Okay, oh. bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back, Fahey. Oh. oh, Okay. KFC had a really good video. It's like it was a it was like a fake funeral. He was doing like a fake service. It's like this is a tank fan's worst nightmare. Wins and it like it just cut to the sad oh music. Oh my god! And it was I yeah I did see that. Oh, a great it video. Abs- it was absolutely true. It is. So then you saw the way we played against the tank team. fans. We didn't deserve that win. You think Tom Brady's gonna? You think Tom Brady's gonna throw you know two interceptions or give the ball up twice in the red zone? Kyle, in you the NFL, that? you have games that you you're gonna win that you shouldn't win, and then you're gonna have losses that you should have won. So I Ben, you lost. know this remaining. Right, you know, game I, I totally just butchered that. You're gonna win sometimes when you should lose, um, like this game, and you're gonna lose sometimes you're when just you should a dog win. And the Jets have had a lot. 
Right. The Jets have had a lot of games that they've lost where you can really argue that they should have won. Um, the first one that comes to mind is probably that Bengals game last season where the Jets made the extra point. To win that. The Jets missed the extra point. They had like eight sacks. You can argue the Jets deserve to win that one. And then they, they made some other stupid mistakes, some stupid Jets moves. But, Kyle, I, the tank's dead, right? No. I mean, the, you're, you're still cheering for the Jets to lose. I'm expect, I have always said I'm expecting them to lose and I want a quarterback over everything. And that aligns me with the tank crowd. I get that. But come on, look at this schedule. Patriots, that's a loss. At the Dolphins, I, I honestly could not tell you. I don't know. That's who, a win. I don't know. Kyle, the Jets dominated the Dolphins three weeks ago. I, I just... I just don't Jay know. Cutler, Jay Cutler is just collecting a paycheck. I don't know which Jay Cutler is going to show up though. The one, the one that's been showing up the past three years. <laughs> that Jay Cutler. Jay Cutler beat us on Monday Night Football once, if you recall that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Congrats, he beat the four and twelve to 2014 New York Jets. And we actually should have won that game because Muhammad. Dilly dilly, there. Kyle. Yeah. No. Screw that <laughs> commercial. Screw that commercial. I hate that commercial so much. Screw Bud Light. Unless you guys want to sponsor us, then we're, you know, hit us up. <laughs> Sellouts. Uh, yeah. No. Okay. Let's let's okay, bring it back. Anyway, my point: Patriots, Falcons, Bills, Buccaneers, Panthers, Chiefs, Broncos, Saints, Chargers. I, I so, you I just threw the Chargers. That. You just threw the Chargers in as as a loss. I love that. No, I love how you no, just threw the Chargers just, in as like a guaranteed loss. Our, no, I named our remaining schedule. Pay attention, Ben. You, you no, you didn't because we don't yeah. finish the season on the Chargers. Yeah, we finish on the Patriots, and then you cut me off. Mm, yeah. Debatable. Okay, um, so Patriots lost, Falcons lost, Bills lost, Bucks lost, Panthers lost, Chiefs lost, Broncos. Eh, we actually might win that game, honestly. Uh, Saints no, lost. Well, I love how you're just throwing these losses. Okay, let's. Yeah, hold on. Let me. Let me. Because I don't have the Jets schedule memorized. I know you. Um, uh, okay. Well, look, the Jets. I. I actually. And I was going to say this to the end, but I think the Jets are going to win this game on Sunday. Screw you. I do. You. I think the Jets are going to win this game. You're high. You're honestly high. I mean, all those wildfires out on the West Coast right now, Ben, you tell me they're not affecting you. Have you heard your takes today? I mean, come on. You're defending Wesley Johnson. You're saying the Jets are going to beat Tom Brady. What are you doing? Well, right now, okay, here we go. Let's look at this. I think the Jets are going to win this Sunday. At home, Three, both three and two. The Patriots God, are not playing good this homer. season. No, the Patriots are not playing good this season. The atmosphere Neither is going to be crazy. Jets. I will Neither take the Jets. Jets. I will take the, the Jets. The Jets are not playing well. Dolphins. Like, that's a win. Now the Jets are sitting at what five and two. Okay, oh. Falcons. Uh, that's a loss. Five and three. Bills. Thursday that's night football. Loss. Give that's me the win. No. Give me the win. You are so incredibly <laughs> high right now. Six and, and three. <laughs> And he's laughing right now because he knows he's playing the role to get all the listeners fired up. Six and three. Take the Buccaneers. Look at him. Oh, are we going to beat the bye week too, Ben? Oh, I really like the line. We're taking down the bye week. My headphones are not working. I'm kind of throwing me off. Yeah, sure. No, it's only working in one ear. It's like really sorry, Jake. That's Um, confidence, Ben. Yeah, that's what it is. Um, uh, Lost to the Panthers. Lost to the Chiefs. Lost to the Broncos. Beat the Saints, beat the Chargers, lose to the Patriots. You think we can beat the Saints? You think we can yeah. beat Drew Brees? Yeah. Really? Uh, yeah, I do. You realize he's like a top five quarterback of all time. Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> and he's like still in his prime. Hold on, I have to, I have to see. I, I, I've been tweeted at. Oh, I see. Okay, never mind. I, no, never mind. I, I, our good friend Kyle Smith was tweeting at me, and I was, I was just making sure I didn't do anything wrong. Because when, when Kyle Smith comes at you with... Uh, yeah, when Kyle well, like, actually, asks you in something, he's usually calling you out, which is... No, not- I'm just like, oh, no, I made a mistake. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, yikes, I just saw that tweet. That's no bueno. Um... No, it's fine. Um. Anyways, yeah, let's get back on schedule. Well, Kyle, let me ask you this question. So, So you... So you're not going to cheer for the Jets this Sunday? I've been cheering my heart out every damn game, Ben. I mean, I have. I've been cheering for them to win every game. It's it's like, I'll give you an example, and you're not going to like this example. I know you're going to be like, oh, that's a stupid example. So I was on my break the other day. And the, oh, that's I was, a stupid example. Yeah, here we go. 
I was on my break the other day, and I wanted some food, and I work at, like, a supermarket, and they have, like, hot soup there, so I went and got some hot soup, and I, it was, like, a thing of chili. I got it, and I told myself, and Kyle. You spilled it all over the place, like nope. Kevin from the office. Nope. That, nope. I did not roast it for, like, eight hours on a hot fire. I don't know. Maybe they did, but I did not. Um, but, and it was a cup. It wasn't, like, a... Whatever. Okay. I re- Besides the point. Anyway. Yes. Yeah, so but I was like, Kyle, don't immediately eat the chili because it's going to be hot. You know it's going to scold your mouth. And what the hell did I do? I went right for it. And that's what I'm doing with the Jets. Saying, Kyle, you need a quarterback. You need draft picks. You need to make this team better. Because right now we only have about 10 pieces that I really like going forward. Everybody else is expendable or not going to be here soon. Why are we going to win? I mean, you know the record's not going to be over 500 at the end of the year anyway. If you're not a playoff contender, why are you really winning? I mean, that's just my point of view on it. So, yeah, I'm rooting for him every game. I was rooting for him week one. I was rooting for him week two. I'm, I was rooting for him last week. I'm going to root for him this week. But deep down, do I want a loss? Do I want a quarterback? Yeah, absolutely. All right, my, my, my comeback to this point, and it's been my comeback for a while, um, except I'll just put, I'll put a different spin on it. We, we just played the Cleveland Browns, and, and you got a glimpse of what it's like to be a fan of a bad football team. Kyle, what has losing, well. losing gotten for the Cleveland Browns the past 10 seasons? And, and more, but we'll just limit it to the past 10 seasons. Okay, I will defend that with complete incompetence by Jimmy Haslam. Okay? Hugh Jackson literally like... Just, what has losing gotten for the Jacksonville Jaguars then? Um, they're like a playoff contender. Yeah, I'm not talking about this season. I'm talking about for the past <laughs> 10 seasons. Are you, are you really about to sit here and wait for 10 years, Kyle? I mean... They okay, fine. It was, it was more on the Browns, but you're just saying, I mean, you threw the Browns as being incompetent. I mean, you can go around the league, look at the perennial losers, and you could sometimes throw the Jets in that category, and you're going to argue incompetence. I mean, do you really think that the Jets are the most competent organization? Do you trust them? Um, I trust Mike McCann. So, so look at the Browns. Look at all the losing and the quote-unquote tanking that they've done, okay? Yeah. And what has that gone for them? Nothing. Nothing. They're, they are at the bottom okay, of the standings sorry, every single year. Topic, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I give you a chance no, to talk. I, you said your stupid chili thing. You said your no, stupid chili thing. No, look at the 2015 draft, Ben. They drafted Trent Richardson with a third overall pick. You don't take a running back in the top five. That's just common sense. Zeke running back, Running back, I, as great as a player as he is. A- Adrian Peterson. He wasn't a top five pick, was he? Uh, yeah, he was. I believe so. I thought he was like a really late first round pick. No, uh, out of I, Oklahoma. I, no, I believe he was picked third. Hold on. Was he? This is where our age gets us. Uh, this was, I think, yeah. this was the year I mean, before he, I became a big fan. He was drafted in like 2008, wasn't he? No, 2007. This is the year before I became like a diehard fan. Yeah. Uh oh, um, our age is showing, Ben. We're losing listeners. Uh oh. Uh. Hold on, just keep talking. Oh, you're, well, you're, 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 it was, he was seventh, so. Okay, so yeah, my rule is don't draft a running back top five because you can find a good running back in the later uh, rounds. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say Todd Gurley, but then I realized he was picked middle of the... Yeah, he was like the he 11th. Picked like 11th, yeah. Okay, sorry, Con- continue with your point. Even I mean, the best, the best running back in the NFL right now, David Johnson, though he is hurt, which is even the more reason to support my point, he was a late-round pick. You know, not a first-round pick. You can find your running back in different rounds other than first. It literally has to be like a Saquon Barkley. Saquon Barkley may be an exception to my rule this year, but we'll see how the season progresses. Then they they either traded back into the first round or they just had the, like, 21st pick. I forget which one. It's been a while. They drafted Johnny Manziel, a quarterback who was clearly not worth a first-round pick. It just made no sense. Two draft picks, that made absolutely no sense. Two first-round picks are supposed to change your franchise. Just for an example, and obviously they're not in the same draft class or anything, Jets, we'll just say two first-round picks. You know, even if you take two out of the three for Mike McCagney, one of them is still going to be a Pro Bowl talent in Leonard Williams and Jamal Adams. Throwing Deron Lee in there, it's a little less. Just say Leonard Williams, Jamal Adams, that's what first-round picks are supposed to be like. And the Browns had the third overall pick, not the sixth overall pick. They had an opportunity at a quarterback a couple times, a real one. They had an opportunity at a shutdown corner. They had an opportunity at a lot of things, and they just screwed it up in the most Browns way possible. 
So yes, I'm going to claim incompetence there. And what are you going to say? Okay, oh yeah, I'm losing gonna, doesn't get you, you everything. I'm going to cut you off. Yeah, you can go into the ifs and ands and buts about the Cleveland Browns being perennial losers. But my point is, is what has losing gotten them? Nothing. What is, they they I have mean, not achieved much. You can look at all the perennial losers, and yes, you can argue about the Jaguars, but may I remind you that the Jets wiped them, even though that game you know, went to overtime. But, um, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and can I just say, well, Kyle, I mean, you and I both know the Jets won that. The, ga- the, the, the Jaguars shouldn't have even been in that game. That was you know, too stupid. Um, play is a fumble and an interception that got him even back into the game. But anyway, the Jets beat the Jaguars this season, uh, and the Jaguars have been losers for pretty much uh, the past decade, and, and they're still probably going to be a loser this season. I, I still don't think they're going anywhere. They're still another year out with Blake Bortles as their quarterback, year or two. Ben, Anyways, the point is, this. You, you can go... Oh, Kyle, hold on. Let me make the point. For, I mean, you, you gave your stupid chili thing. Let, let me... Hold on. Let me get this out there. Look at the Browns. Look what's happened for them. Nothing. They've had time after time opportunities to draft top players, and they either haven't, they have, and it hasn't panned out, um, or whatnot. Then you look at a team like the Houston Texans, who have been kind of in that circle cycle of, of mediocrity for a while, seven and nine, eight and eight. But oh god, what have they been doing? Well, no, hold on, hold on. What do they, what do they do? What do no, they do sorry, for? It was, it was a really deep hot fly. I thought it was a home run. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying. Um, Look what they did. They, estab- they, they acquired young talent. They like J.J. Watt, <clears throat> Leonard Williams. They, they, they started to build um, through the draft and free agency and some small pieces, Whitney Merciless. Um, Wait, did you just compare J.J. Watt to Leonard? I'm, I'm just saying as far as a, as a piece they're goes. They're not even the, close. No, they're not. But I'm just saying that, that the Jets have their star defensive lineman. The Texans have their star defensive lineman. My point is, is the Texans started to build a team, started to build a culture that's not surrounded about, about being a perennial loser. What free agent wants to go to Cleveland? Besides getting money, nobody wants to go to Cleveland. It's a, it's a terrible city, um, and, it, and it's a team yeah, that when you, mean, think, when you think Browns, you think losing. You think I feces, mean, honestly. Okay. The state of Ohio in general is a huge like, turnoff okay. for any free agent. I think I can definitely like, – LeBron somebody. James. My point is, let's, let's bring it back. LeBron. Do the Jets want to be in which position? Oh, and, and I didn't even finish the Texans' point. Anyways, the Texans built, 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 young team, built a culture. Then when they found their guy, they traded up, they got their guy, they had a team to surround him with, an environment to surround him with, a culture to surround him with, and they picked Deshaun Watson, and he's, th- what, he's thrown five touchdowns the last two games he's had in each he's, game? He's played well. Yeah. So what situation would you rather be? Would you rather be the team that – that, that builds the roster, that builds the team, that builds a winning environment, that beats the Patriots and, and you know, and may, may finish 7-9 this season, but builds and builds and builds uh, and acquires draft picks and stuff. And then when they find the guy they like, they, they trade up, they get him, and they put him in a situation. Because I said this, Kyle, if you're picking number one, you're going to have a lot more holes on your team than, than a quarterback. No, I mean it. I mean, I'm you, gonna so you're going to put – look at Deshaun Kaiser. Look at Deshaun Kaiser. I think he's I'm, a very talented quarterback. But you plug him in that Cleveland – I mean, you, you could plug Deshaun Watson in that Cleveland offense. I don't know how good he'd be. And I'm not saying the Texans offense is amazing. I'm just saying, I mean, just the culture around Cleveland and the roster surrounding him, I just – that's not the route the Jets should go down. The Jets should okay, win as many games as possible. Keep building this tight locker room. I mean, Austin Safarian Jenkins said it, that this is the, the tightest locker room he's ever been in. He's building a culture, a lot of camaraderie. The chemistry is high. I'm just saying, I, I think the Jets keep winning, and then if the Jets like a guy, uh, the other thing that everybody forgets Look, that that's huge, that's huge, that that nobody's talking about is that Sheldon Richardson trade not only netted us a very solid wide receiver in Jermaine Curse, but also gave us a second round draft pick, and the Jets can use that second round draft pick, or they have bait, or they have ammo. You know, they have two second round draft picks now, which is very valuable. Two second round draft picks is a lot. So. Yeah. I mean, I agree, so, so I'm saying the Jets could either package both of those in a first um, and, you know, and whatever else is in the deal. Maybe that's it. Maybe there's more, depending on how good the Jets are this season. Or the Jets package one and would still have a second-round draft pick this year. But the point is those two second-round draft picks are huge for a Jets team that's trying to trade up. So let's say the Jets finish 8-8, eight and eight, um, you know, have a solid season, play well. The safety's looking good. Some nice pieces on on the offensive line, and and there's just good young players playing well. 
You see the emergences of Elijah McGuire and our Darius Stewart, hopefully by the end of the year, Marcus May, Jamal Adams, as I said, maybe Darren Lee's coming on and Jordan Jenkins and, and Tony Ely and Leonard Williams and all these guys, all these young guys start to play well. You're picking, you know, 14th or whatever. You like Josh Rosen. You trade up with, you know, the Tennessee Titans or the, the you know, New York Giants probably, the Chargers, Browns, whoever. Trade up to number one, take him. You know, you bite that bullet, but then you can take your guy and you put him in a in a roster that actually has pieces to work with, rather than just losing, sucking. I mean, if the Jets have the first overall pick, I mean, they're not going to now. But if they, if they went into the season, that would mean okay, that that play you were talking about, Mark is going to get that interception. That's not happening. Jamal Adams isn't playing well. Offensive line is playing terribly. I mean, the weapons are awful. Elijah McGuire is nothing. I disagree. Mm-hmm. Front seven's playing. Right. No, to be the worst team in football. Look at the New York Giants. How many positive things do they have going for them right now? They don't have. And they probably team. won't even be the worst team in football. Probably, I would assume that that. Their team. Well, is I mean, they might. They might. Coach. They have. The players have quit on him. You are not going to get effort. That is a quitting team. So I don't. My think point is, sense. Kyle. Is I'm saying no, yes. Yeah, look at that situation. The, 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 the Jets and Giants flip flopped. The Jets and Giants. Hold on, Kyle. I. You're going to get plenty of time to talk. This is my last point. The Jets and Giants flip-flopped. Look at the Giants. Look at that season. Look at the chemistry. You're talking about, yeah, players quitting on the coach. What type of chemistry and locker room does that build? They need to fire right, how many positive like things do they have going on for them? How many positive things do they have going on for them? Nothing. Uh, not I'd rather be in this Jets situation nothing. where a lot of young guys hungry, playing well, building a culture, guys uniting under Todd Bowles, buying into Michael Cagney's plan. Young guys are playing well, building the culture. You're going to go 8-8, eight and eight, whatever. You know, you... you Attract a few free agents, young wait, guys. Wait, you're telling me you have you rather have that than like the amazing Giants defense who's just having a bad year, and you need to get a head coach and Odell Beckham Jr. and Brandon Marshall. I mean, yeah, Brandon Marshall. Need, yeah, I, I don't. You need, <laughs> you need you get to subtract Brandon Marshall from that equation. Yes, would I love to have Odell Beckham Jr.? Would I love to have Odell Beckham Jr. and you know Landon Collins? Yeah, I I much rather go like. But seen with Odell think about Beckham it. Jr. Then go like eight and eight with Leonard Williams. I don't think like Leonard Williams and Odell Beckham Jr. compare. I don't think that's a fair comparison. Yes, a lot of well, people. I, mean, I would love to have Odell Beckham Jr. Best player by far. But you think the, point about, is the, best player? the point about the okay. Texans. The point about the Texans. You're saying like players can't develop by their losing, but yet the. Texans have repeatedly had high draft pick after high draft pick and have literally built their team off of these draft high picks. High draft pick? What? J.J. Oh. Watt, J.J. Watt was the 11th pick. Javion Clowney was the first pick. Brian Cushing was the 15th pick. Mario Williams was the first pick. I mean, Mario, Mario, Williams, Mario Williams. Mario Williams. Mario Williams. No Mario Williams. 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 He was there for their playoff runs, though. No, he wasn't! Mario Williams! Mario Williams with the Bills! Mario Williams! Mario what? Williams was their best player for years, Ben. In 2009! Ah, <laughs> uh, 2006. What? Yeah! Point proven! Even worse for you! It's a decade removed! He was there as a successful player, though. What and is your you point? Know. You just... That you, <laughs> you know you... you, 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 you I'll explain to everybody what happened because I've gotten to know you and I know exactly what just happened here, is you, you walked into the bear trap, you realize you made a mistake, but you have to somehow figure out how can I turn this into, you know, to work in my argument. I've done that before as well. I believe I did it at the show early. I can't even remember when. But, I mean, Deshaun like, Watson was the 12th pick. Yeah, but they still traded up for him. No. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not saying the Jets have traded up to number one. I'm saying, but they built their guy and then they traded up for him. They won games. They liked Deshaun Watson. They liked to Phil. Maybe the Jets do that with Josh Allen or Lamar Jackson or Sam Darnold. Yeah, Sam Darnold might fall. To, I could see Sam Darnold fall into 12, maybe. You never know. Deshaun Watson was to, supposed to be the perennial number one overall pick for like two years. If falling, you don't want him. I would say that. Deshaun Watson fell. I, I honestly still don't want Deshaun Watson. You I still don't want Deshaun Watson. I think after he's scoring. playing well right really? now. I don't think he's going to be a top 10 quarterback. Why? Because I think eventually teams are going to catch on to what he's doing. It's what is he doing? Out, he's expanding the outside with Will Fuller. He's taking away the top safety. They're putting DeAndre Hopkins on the other side, working him in the middle of the field, and C.J. Fedora was in the middle of the field. But he's not accurate enough to hit the tight end, so a lot of the times they just dump off to Lamar Miller. Now, what will I say? Is he executing well for a rookie? 
Absolutely. I think that he's was doing other a fin- BS that you just I'll, I'll let you keep going, but the fact that you just I mean, I'm going yes, off of every Travis. play, every I'm, play. I'm going That's off what of they Travis do. That, you, they just go no. Will Fuller, you go deep. DeAndre, you just go over the that's middle. That's primarily what their scheme was. That was the same thing oh, with Tom okay. Savage. I mean, right. that's their offense. I mean, Tom Savage also is in so a th- That's more Bill O'Brien player. than Deshaun Watson then, right? Yeah, I would say that. So people will figure out Bill O'Brien, not Deshaun Watson. I mean, Deshaun Watson's there for the next five years. I mean, it's kind of like a Blaine Gabbert thing. Again, doesn't doesn't have anything to... Bu- okay, Kyle, you're losing this argument. The point is is that the Jets should win this fight. We haven't even previewed this Patriots. We've just been stuck on this tank talk. Point is, tank is dead, accept it. The, the best, case, dead. best case scenario for you, Kyle, is the Jets lose every single game and what, finish with the fourth pick? Yeah. The third I'm, pick? I'm completely okay with that. No. Yeah. I would I, maybe cheer for losses in December if the Jets, you know, were 1-11. At one and twelve, and there's another team they're fighting with for the number one pick. But right now, on a three-game winning streak, heading into my least favorite team at home, both three and two. Why are the Patriots your least favorite team? Why are they not yours? Because I respect the hell out of them. I mean, they're a great franchise. They've done amazing things. Yeah, are they? They cheated a lot as well, but you know. I mean, I don't respect. I don't look. I mean. First of all, I don't like any of them off the field. I've never once watched an interview of Bill Belichick, Tom you Brady. You don't like Tom Brady? Obviously not. How do you not like Tom Brady? You, the dude's uh, like one of the like most likable individuals. Yeah, you know, love guys who leave their pregnant girlfriends. I'm not going to act like that's the reason I don't like him, but I'm just arguing what? that. You know, you not hear what? about this? No. This first, if you can look it up. Uh, that, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm for, for listeners, I'm not. That is obviously not the reason I don't like Tom Brady. But just to uh, go to, it's not like he's. <laughs> I mean, no, he's a, he's a d bag. I, I don't like Tom Brady. I've never liked. I mean, look, if he played for the Chicago Bears, I probably wouldn't feel as strongly about him. No, I mean, look, he was the first, like, you know, for a lot of listeners, he, you know, that this might be Dan Marino for them. Um, where a guy they grew up, you know, watching and just hating. But Tom Brady, I mean, from the age of seven, really, I've just this is the guy that beat the Jets, made me cry. Like he was just, he was always winning, and I didn't like him off the field. Um, and he, you know, he's a Jets rival, so yeah, I've built a lot of animosity. I'm sure if I saw Tom Brady, I'd be, you know, fine. But I'm just saying, I've never once watched an interview with Bill Belichick and been like, wow, that's a great guy right there. Um, I don't know. Well, that's where you're wrong. He's just smug. I mean, Tom I think I, also, this, also, this, I I respect Bill Belichick, and I think he's the best coach of the NFL in NFL history. I think he's the best coach in NFL history. I think he is the smartest football mind we've had. But I still don't like him, and until he retires, I, I won't even you know like. And I don't like what he did to the Jets. And but, uh, anyways, the Patriots are all obviously my least favorite organization for all the you know banter and players that have gone back and forth and the Patriots have won Super Bowls and you know obviously there's the whole New York Boston thing and I'm not even a part of that but that's why I don't like meanwhile you're hating on the Giants who is like a team we play once every four years in a completely different conference same like I don't there's I have nothing against Giants fans or the Giants team have you ever like actually talked to a Giants fan? Yes, I've talked. I've talked to who many. Who isn't Giants your fans. cousin Jack? Who isn't your cousin Jack? Yeah, no, I I have I've talked to many Giants fans. My entire family. And how many of them did you want to kill on site? <laughs> Quite a few, but it still doesn't. I mean, Here a lot of people say that about Jets fans. I, I look. I have no. I, I have no issue with Giants fans. I have no uh, issues with Patriots fans. If, if we play, I'll say this. I'll say this. I'll say this. If if the Jets play the Giants two times a year. And then I would probably hate them more than the Patriots. But we don't. See, and the last I, time we played them, we beat them in overtime. So, I hate I mean, the last time the Giants have really just crushed the Jets. Like, really just heartbreaking. I mean, that 2011 Christmas Eve game, kind of. Yes. But, but you could, I mean, the Jets still lost to Miami, you know, the next week. And, and you know, that team was not, obviously, what not I the hate, same. What I hate about Giants fans is, you're right, we only play every four years. And then they act like, oh, one win four years ago, totally decides who's better now. See, at least with the Patriots, they dominate it. Well, Kyle, I mean, that argument is the only one that works in our favor because we beat the Giants in 2016 and, or 2015. And you know. And I'm not saying we're better than the Giants. I, well, I, <laughs> we might be right now. I, I disagree. Our you think the 0-5 Giants yeah, I, are better? 
Our record is better, yes. But the Giants have been fairly close in most of their games. I mean, it's not like they've been blown out, okay? And, yeah, that offensive line, it has some problems. Eric Flowers is a liability. Is Ben McAdoo an idiot? Yeah. But we got an idiotic coach, too, and we have some offensive line woes. Do I think it's as bad as theirs? No, but if they were healthy... Kyle, you know the Jets would beat the Giants right now. No, no, I I disagree. I I... Look at the Giants receiving core right now. Eli Manning's having the worst year of his career. No, no, no. Say they're healthy. No, if they're... Oh, oh, well, yeah, for throwing out hypotheticals, maybe. But even then, I mean, they were pretty healthy, and they just lost last week. I mean, OBJ has been there every game so far. And then, uh, yeah, now but, like, lost, he but. had, like, a fractured ankle in the preseason. You honestly think he's been 100%? What? You saw that hit that he took. It wasn't a fractured ankle. He fractured ankle. his ankle Sunday. What are you talking yeah, about? No. In the preseason, the dirty hit that he took, that knocked him out for, like, the rest of the preseason, and he was in really bad shape, and he, like, really surprisingly played. You have no idea what I'm talking about. I can hear you typing it. Bobby yeah, Dottie, I, have, I have zero idea. I mean, I know he got hurt Bobby the Body Calhoun from the Cleveland Browns, he hit him really low in preseason, and it was a dirty hit. He went for his knees, and Odell got Yeah, no, hurt. I saw, I remember this. I'm just saying, like, why are I we... I mean, it affected him. It clearly affected him. He was not healthy. And I don't know what happened to Brandon Marshall. I mean, they just, like, didn't throw to him. Brandon Marshall's old and slow. Oh, my gosh. It's hard. It's like talking to a brick wall. Anyways, let's, let's, let's bring it to this Jets-Patriots game. We, we kind of segued into the Patriots, and we just hit the side of the wall and flipped the car over. Um, mm. 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 <laughs> let's, let's preview this Jets-Patriots game. All right, Kyle. Well, pretend you're an actual Jets fan for a minute and pretend you're cheering for this this team. I think I'm um, the more Jet. I'm think I'm I'm more of a Jet fan because I know what's real for this team. You know what's real for this team, Kyle. How many people would have said that um, that Deshaun Watson would have been the number one overall pick last year? Uh, a, lot a lot of, of people. people. <laughs> Can't win with you. Anyways, the point is is that nobody's for sure. No, nothing is for certain. Go win as many games as possible. That's my philosophy, and I'm going to cheer for the Jets. I think there are a lot of things for certain, Ben. You can be conceited. I can be idiotic. I think those are both guarantees in life. Um, I think the Earth is going to keep spinning tonight. I think that's a guarantee. Well, Earth's and, flat, so. And, oh, I'm about to trade <laughs> you to Boston. I was kidding. Happen. What did you say? I'm about to trade you to Boston. So. <laughs> Kyrie Irving. Um, all right, anyways, let's, let's talk about it. You, did, you shouldn't have had to explain that. They, they should know what that meant. All right, um, let's, let's hop into this. Jets, Patriots, Kyle, biggest keys to victory for the, for the Jets um, to defeat Tom Brady in the past. Uh, Kyle's keys, let's hear them. Yeah, pressure. Pressure, 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 pressure. That is the only time we beat Tom Brady. You cannot just have Leonard Williams get triple teams have Muhammad Wilkerson, you know, have me running half a mile, and then Mike Pinnell, whatever he's doing, and whoever the hell else we have out there now, we have to get pressure. Jordan Jenkins, I think he's doing a fine job on his own. I don't think he's uh, above average by any means, but I think he's getting, you know, sort of the job done for what we're asking him. But we just don't have pressure consistently. And if you give Tom Brady time, he is going to find somebody. Morris Claiborne is not going to have an amazing game every day of the week. Marcus May is not going to have an amazing game. It's a pretty good season. I know he is, but not against Tom Brady. Marcus May is not going to do it against Tom Brady. Jamal Adams isn't going to do it against Rob Gronkowski. I mean, and don't, don't even let me get on the second corner. We have to get pressure to Tom Brady if we want to win this game. Now, on the offensive side of the ball, we have to be clicking on absolutely all cylinders. There is no relying on turnovers in the red zone to save your ass. That isn't going to work this week. We need to score on almost every possession because Tom Brady is going to do it if we don't. Josh McCown, you have to be in line with all of these guys. Make sure everything's right. You know, this defense isn't that good this year. They have lost a lot of guys. Rob Nikovich, retired. Coney Ely, let him go. They traded away Chandler Jones. They traded away, who's the other guy? I'm forgetting his name right now. Um, he, he's on Cleveland. 
Um, out the oh, line. I, know, I know exactly who you're talking about. Jamie Collins. Jamie Collins. They've gotten rid of their best pass rushers in some way, shape, or form in the past three years. Uh, Derek Rivers, who they were really relying on this year, done for the year. They are literally down the guys who are on their like fourth string practice squad less than two years ago as their starters right now. And guess what? It's not working for them. So this shouldn't be that huge of a challenge. I would honestly say that maybe the Browns are of equal defense right now. Now, do I think Bill Belichick's going to scheme the hell out of them and get them in the right position? Probably. But you've got to take advantage of this weakness. Brandon Shell, you've been having a good year. You've got to continue it. Same goes for Kelvin. Wesley Johnson, you better step the hell up because Malcolm Brown is one of the few bright spots on that New England defense. He's a first-round pick for a lead. A reason. You don't hear his name a lot because he was the 31st, but he's doing a good job right now. I like what he's doing. He will easily beat Wesley Johnson in the trenches if he continues to play like he has. And that applies to both men there. So wide receivers, quarterbacks, they got to get in sync. Bilal Powell really needs to play in this game. Do I think it's going to happen? No. We signed another running back for a reason. So I don't think Bilal Powell is going to play. Matt Forte's iffy. So it's like, honestly, Elijah McGuire... Tavares, Cadet, is he even still on the team? Did we cut him yet? I feel like we cut no, him every... Yeah, okay. We've caught him like eight times already. I mean, it's insane at this point. Um, so this offense has just got to get clicking. And I know I'm running back a little bit, but pass rush and offense, which happen to be the most key things in the NFL. I don't think it's a coincidence. But you got to do it at a good level to beat the evil empire. All right, I like it. Um. Yeah, let's let's talk about some of that stuff you said there. Um, I, w- I want to get three players, and I know you were giving you know keys to the victory, um, but three players that the Jets need to shut down on the Patriots' offensive side of the ball. I mean, obviously there's Tom Brady, but Patriots have a lot of weapons, some no names, but three guys in the Patriots' offense that the, if the Jets can you know neutralize them or defense, I guess if the Jets can neutralize these players, um, they can win. Um, huh. well, I think it's hard to limit it to three because I think they have like eight running backs who can, you know, just catch game-winning Super Bowl touchdowns at any point in time. Um, I'll, I'll say the obvious, Tom Brady. I mean, <laughs> they, they take away him and they're nothing. Rob Gronkowski, another obvious one, but it looks like he's going to play. Um, this is going to be a big matchup for our rookie safeties. And, you know, our linebackers, I don't trust I don't trust them to cover them, so it's probably going to be on the safeties. But still, got to throw in the linebackers because I'm sure Todd Bowles will put a linebacker on Rob Gronkowski at some point. And then, you know, a strange one. Well, I would like to see Jamal Adams on Rob Gronkowski. Nah, I don't know how it's going to fare. But Marcus May or Jamal Adams, I'd love to see one of them. Just let them learn by experience. And, and I'm not the first person to say this, but I would just love to see um, – so I, I'm also very, I'm very distracted because the Syracuse Clemson game is going on right now. But um, so you're watching the Yankees Astros, and I got the Syracuse Clemson game. Syracuse is about to upset Clemson. Christ, are you kidding me? What? Jesus Christ, dude! That's right down the middle. I swear <laughs> to God, these. I'm so we just blind. have a podcast of us just watching sports. Um, yeah, that would be a great podcast. Yeah, no, I would love to see Jamal Adams though on on Rob Gronkowski. Try it out, see what he can do, test his abilities. I can test it. I mean. Yeah, all right. Well, Kyle, uh, I guess last Wait, thing. Wait, didn't, I didn't get my last one. You said I'm three. sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. Go. All right, last one. A little bit of an odd one. Malcolm Butler. If you beat Malcolm Butler, I think you can win this game. Honestly. Stephon Gilmore, I mean, they, like, literally burnt money signing that guy. I think we all predicted this one. Um, I He was nothing in Buffalo. I mean, he was not good. He was getting beat by T.J. Graham. I, and they just, like, gave him $70 million. I was very surprised by that signing. So if you beat Malcolm Butler, which I guess is easier said than done, I think this secondary is very vulnerable. Uh, I mean, I've said how weak this Patriots defense is this year. Malcolm Brown and Malcolm Butler, I'm starting to sense a little theme there, are their only good players as of right now. So. Hmm. Okay. Uh well, I guess it's prediction time. I'm trying to think if there's any. Um, oh, 
I have one one last thing. We actually have two last things before we get to prediction. Um, this is not Jets related. Um, one must star fantasy football player from around the league. Oof. Um. It, this is a hard one. Must start. You know, I'm not familiar with all the matchups this week, so I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I haven't looked at the betting lines yet, so I don't know everything off the top of my head. But I would go ahead and say Tom Brady. <laughs> wow. You just want, you want to give any explanation? He's playing the Jets. Wow, okay, fine. Um, I would go, I have... I have a few. I think one of my top ones would be Deshaun Watson against Cleveland. Yeah, that's probably the I just watch that. I think Elijah McGuire, if the Jets give him... Uh, then he's not a must-start um, if you're throwing in an F gun. That's a good point. That's a good point. But if, if the Jets are going to be stupid and give Matt Forte carries or a blow pal, but if, if this, this is one that you wouldn't really know until the morning of the game, but Elijah McGuire... I would love to see him just go off. Um, so, but if I'm going to say must start, Deshaun Watson. I also like Chris Hogan going up against Buster Screen and um, Justin Burris and Daryl Robertson. Those guys. I think I think he might have a big game. Uh, and then lastly, really, we started this. Chris, uh, dude, Chris Hogan's slot been, wide receiver against Buster Screen. Wow. Oh yeah, I mean Chris Hogan's also been one of the best fantasy football players in uh, in fantasy football. Um, last thing. Um, before we go to predictions, uh, we started this a few weeks ago, like we were doing the top five quarterbacks or whatever. We'll open this up to top five players for the Jets to draft because the Jets are winning games and um, they might look other well than quarterbacks, but just your top five players. They might all five be quarterbacks. But for right now, for at least this week, if the Jets lose again, then we might bring it back to quarterbacks. For right now, the top five players the Jets could draft your big board. Um, give it Oof. to me. You're a draft expert, so yeah. and I'll chime in here, but let's hear it. Um, my top five players in, in this draft are going to be significantly different than what I think the Jets should draft. I think Saquon Barkley is the most talented in this draft, and I know I was saying how you shouldn't draft a running back in the top – uh, five, but like I did say earlier, this one is a little bit of a uh, you know an exception to the rule. I honestly have not seen an individual that talented in a very very long time. I feel like I say that every year, but I mean this a hundred percent when I say he's comparable to Barry Sanders. I mean he's a very special young man. You know, hopefully his knees hold up. But for the Jets, um, I'm going to stay away from quarterbacks right now. Because I want to make, I, we always talk about quarterbacks, and I kind of want to switch it up, so this isn't going to be like 100%, but this one's going to be a little bit of a surprise one. I'll start with Connor Williams, offensive tackle from Texas. Played very well this year. He played very well last year. Uh, definitely going to be a left tackle in the NFL. Has the talent, has the size, a lot to like about him, flexible, uh, adapts to the bend. He's got a lot of traits to like about an NFL left tackle. I love Kel uh, Kelvin. He's young. Um, but, I mean, if this guy's sitting here, I unfortunately, I might go Connor because of just, like, his age. And, you know, Kelvin still, still has some nagging injuries going on. I think he's filled in well this year, but, like, I don't know if I'm signing him to a long-term extension at this point. He needs to prove a little bit more. But it is early in the season, so obviously this changes. Um, number two, I'm going to go Harold Landry. You know, edge rusher. I, get, I think in the NFL he would probably switch to a defensive end, maybe put on a little muscle. But he's currently a, a linebacker at Boston College. We need an edge rusher. We have absolutely no pressure. Muhammad Wilkerson needs to go. He's showing no effort. Leonard Williams is getting double and triple team on almost every play, as he should because he's a Pro Bowl level player. So we need somebody to get through. Tom Brady will pick us apart every day of the week, like I've said, if we don't get pressure. Jordan Jenkins, he's doing a good job in the role they ask him, but he's not, he's not a pass rusher. He really isn't. He is just a usable linebacker. So we need a pass rusher. Uh, number three, I'm going to go Malik Jefferson, another linebacker, another Texas player. Texas actually has a lot of people in this draft that are like considerably good. 
which is kind of strange. We we really do need a linebacker. I don't trust the Ron Lee. I don't trust the Mario Davis. We need one of these new age linebackers who are surprisingly fast and surprisingly physical and understand the game. And right now, I think he can do it. Um, number four. This this one's hard. I I just gotta go from a talent standpoint. I gotta go Saquon Barkley. He is just so electric. And I know we have Elijah. I know we have Bilal Powell. But Bilal Powell's expendable. He might get traded at the end of the year. Elijah McGuire is a rookie who was picked in the sixth round. I don't think he should limit you from taking a franchise-changing player like Saquon Barkley could be. So I really like Saquon. If you haven't seen him run yet, I mean, it's just phenomenal. Um, and Ben's taking a video. Don't know why, but he is. Ben, what are you no, up to? I got a text. That definitely sounded like a video. No, it, it's the text. But okay. Mm. Okay. It's on my and laptop. Then, ah, okay. And then, also, Syracuse just won, so I've just been zoned out right you're now. You're joking. Watching. Really? Yeah, Syracuse beat Clemson, yeah. Good to, I'm good hyped. For, good for I know. Now. I'm very hyped right wow. now. So I'm trying to keep you calm while we end the show. Wow. All right, number five, Cortland Sutton, wide receiver, Notre Dame. We need a number one wide receiver. Let's go for it. Why not? All right, well, that was good. Um, yeah, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm just so zoned out. Syracuse beating Clemson. Jeez. Um, all right. Well, we already just saw one upset, Kyle. Why not make it two in the same weekend? Your predictions, Jets versus Patriots. I'll let you start. Jets lose by a lot. <laughs> uh, what's the score? Similar to Thanksgiving. Oh, well that, that's not a lot then. Just lost by five in that game and blew a 10-point lead. Kyle? The Jets-Patriots Thanksgiving game. The butt fumble game. Oh, no, no. I thought you were talking about this past year. The Jets did not play Thanksgiving this past year. They played Thanksgiving weekend, but okay. Anyways. Every uh, NFL team does. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, yeah, I just that's what I thought you meant because I was I went to the game because I was there for Thanksgiving. Anyways, um, yeah, my prediction: I actually think the Jets are gonna win in an upset. Give me it. I'm taking it. I like it. I think it's gonna be a crazy what, atmosphere what at MetLife. Are you getting paid by to promote that? No, I'm saying I think it's gonna be a crazy atmosphere at MetLife. Three and two, three oh, yeah. and two. Jets are playing well. Jets are young, scrappy. I think they're gonna do it. I I believe that the Jets are gonna do it. Ben, you should, be, if you've ever watched Scooby Doo, you should know Scrappy Doo always loses. Scrappy means nothing. <laughs> I don't even know what the hell you're saying. Um, sorry, my my phone went off again. Um, yeah, no, I just I think it's the Jet, the Jets will come through. I think it'll be a close game, hard fought, um, but I think the Jets will win. And Ben's wrong. No, all right. That, uh, that I guess that's where we'll end it. I came back and I said I just let you know in advance. Just to give you one last opportunity not to embarrass yourself. What did you say? I this is Kyle from the future, and he's telling you to change <laughs> change it right now and don't embarrass yourself. You still no, I do not waffle like you, Mister Fahey. I'm sticking to it. I Jets are going to be the I Patriots. I think we all know that I am not the waffler who has ever been on the Jet Take podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, David. Oh, <coughs> that was Lawsuit. a real cough. Lawsuit. Thank you. Lawsuit. I like David, but yeah, you waffled quite a bit. Um, <laughs> all right. I think the Jets are going to win this weekend. You can count on it. Um, that'll do it for our show. Again, you can check us out on Twitter at the Jet Take. Best place to follow us. Uh, three other fa- or three other uh, social medias: Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Also, the Jet Take. We're on the uh, Turn on the Jets digital network. You can follow us. Turn on the Jets, or you can find us on the uh, on TurnOnTheJets.com. We have all all our episodes and, and articles and stuff up there. Um, yeah, and then lastly, we shouted it out at the beginning, um, but really good opportunity here for the New York Jets. They're giving us um, to, to give to you guys. Go to the Jets website. If you want to go to the Patriots game, the Falcons game, or the Bills game, um, all three very good games. You can go to all three if you want, but discounted tickets, official New York Jets tickets on the discount, um, and the first five people, again, there's a lot of open spots, so so just make sure to do it as soon as this episode uh, uploads. Um First five people get uh, on the field access after the game, um, and you never know if you listen to this Sunday. If you're listening, 
Oh, I'm just saying, if you listen to this Sunday, um, still DM we'll us. We'll, we'll, we'll tell you. Well, no, we'll tell you if, you, if there's tickets available. Uh, maybe not, but just don't be afraid to reach out, see what we got going. Um, but first five people get uh, postfield game access. Mr. Fahey, any last words? Um, I mean, I usually say my last words for after the. All right, well, I guess that's a good point. I guess that'll do it for us. Uh, thank you um, for another great episode of the Jet Take. It was very fun to record this one. Just Kyle and I. I'm sitting in the dark watching Q's beat Clemson. It's a good night. Um, Kyle, how, how are the Yankees doing? Um, I had to go back into my room, but we were down to nothing. Damn. Okay. Well, maybe not a perfect New York night, but you know. Um, and anyway, thank you for listening to another episode of the Jet Take. You can that was like one word. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Jet Take. Uh, you can catch us next Wednesday. Uh, we will have callers back on that Wednesday. Uh, you can call in five one five seven three nine twelve eighty five. The pin is two six one eight six zero with the pound or hash sign. Um, so you can call in Wednesday night eight o'clock Eastern. We'll be live. Kyle and I right here arguing about the Jets winning. Um, all right, thank you for listening, and we'll leave you with the best chant in the National Football League. Everybody have a safe week, and hopefully the New York Jets pull off the miracle uh, this next week, if I can find the theme song. Hold on. This is awkward. There it is. All right, have everybody have a nice week. We'll talk to you guys next week. The power of Jesus Christ will lead us to a win. That was a terrible last thing to say, but okay, hopefully the Jets win.